Thanks, Nikki. First, I'd like to start by thanking the Euron Gustafsson Stiftung for this wonderful prize and the honour, actually, and for the wonderful amount of money that will really boost our research in the coming years. So I've been working in the fly to decode signalling through ALK. I'd like to start with this, which is slid off here. Um, she's a lot like you, and here is actually a picture of a fruit fly. Um, and back in 1999, Fruit fly, um, people were very surprised, especially the general public, when um, they realised how many genes we share with fruit flies. And this very nice quote from Matt Ridley in the Daily Telegraph really put this um, down. And that every time we commit a telephone number um, to memory, we use the same genes as fruit flies do. So fruit flies are uh, a really good model system, one of very many we have in an arsenal, arsenal of model systems to really address developmental processes and, and how they function. People have used flies for a very long time. They develop very rapidly. And one of the important things, at least um, for our researcher here in Sweden, is that they're small and cheap to keep. And we have a fantastic um, genetic toolbox with which to manipulate them. Hugo Bellin, who's a, a well-known researcher in the fly field, said you get 10 times uh, more biology um, for in a fruit fly than you do in mice. And that's not to negate mice. They're important. But it's really an important point. So the molecule I've been interested in for 20 years now is something called ALK. It stands for anaplastic lymphoma kinase, named after the tumour where it was first described. This is a cell surface receptor shown here. And basically, it interprets signals from the, out signals from the outside and tells the cell how to respond to them. And I'm interested in how that works during development and also during pathological <coughs> processes. The first thing we did many years ago was to knock this out in the, um, in the fly genome. And what happens is that the fly doesn't make any gut muscle. And this is an excellent thing for us to monitor and then dissect this pathway. In the top, you've got a, a normal larvae. It's been eating some pink food, so you can see its gut. In the bottom, you have a larvae where it's been knocked out. And this larvae animal will soon die. So by looking at this and dissecting it, we can start to build a pathway. We can also identify the very important control mechanisms, such as the ligand, which binds to the receptor and activates it. In this case, it's a molecule called jelly belly, and this is named because of the, the phenotype of the gut. It's like a jelly belly. And if you knock this out, you see that it looks just like the receptor. So it hasn't got a, a gut muscle. So we can start to build these pathways. And even in this simple fruit fly, this is back in 2003, we've managed to build a very complex um, pathway just in this particular tissue, which this receptor regulates. So this is kind of timeline of this receptor and how we've understood it over time. And we've been very busy working in the fruit fly, but above you see in humans and um, working on this receptor. And in fact, in 2007, interest was really generated by the discovery of, of um, tumour lesions in ALK, in, in, in lung cancer. So now we understand, actually, since then, in 2013, that this receptor is often mutated in human cancer. On this side, you have fusion proteins. And on this side here, on the right-hand side, you have neuroblastoma. And this is a childhood disease which we are particularly interested in studying in ALK. So neuroblastoma is a developmental tumour. Um, it rises from the neural crest, which is a highly migratory tissue. And what happens is that the receptor is mutated in a large number of cases, in familial neuroblastoma, which is inherited neuroblastoma, and also in sporadic neuroblastoma. What have we done on this front? Well, we actually do a number of things, and I'll just give you a few flavours here. So here is the human receptor that's expressed in the fly eye, and this is a beautifully formed fly eye, 800 units. And these are three independent neuroblastoma mutations taken from patients, which we've tested. And what you can see is this completely disrupts the, the structure of this eye. And that's because these mutations exhibit a, a uncontrolled activity. And this disrupts the, the eye here of the Drosophila. We can also use the fly as a kind of test for drug and inhibitor um, assays. So if we take, for example, a test um, inhibitor shown here in blue, and if you apply it, you should shut off this pathway in theory. And this, you can see, works rather well. Here is a mutant. And here we add some, some inhibitors into the fly food. You can see that this reverts the phenotype. So that um, is studying the activated mutations. But one of the things which has been a real bugbear in the field for, for 10 to 15 years is what turns on the human receptor. And we in my lab have looked for this for, um, since 2003. 
So in, um, last year we were able to identify this. There are actually two molecules, FAM150A and FAM150B, which activate the human receptor. And we think this is really important. And we were able to show, actually, that if you manipulate this activation, so here you have the ligand which binds the receptor, turns it on, and if you make, for example, antibodies which block this interaction, you can turn off the signaling. And this, we hope, um, will be the basis of some um, therapeutic developments in the future. So this just brings me to the future. What we will do with the money is to explore this very much further. We will continue to try and find basic mechanisms which explains how this receptor functions in vivo, in the fruit fly, also in mice. And we'll try and apply this um, with collaborators and also ourselves to human neuroblastoma. And we do this, of course, by assembling our, our own expertise and also with collaborators. So science, I guess, is a highly collaborative effort. Um, I'd like to thank a number of people, my PhD postdoc supervisors who taught me how to be a good scientist. I think it's, this is a, po a point in time where I can really say thanks to them. Umu University, I, I was there for 15 years and did a lot of this work there. My own lab now at the Institute of Biomedicine, Salgrenska, they're shown here, and a neuroblastoma con consortium that we have here in Sweden, which is very active looking at ALK and neuroblastoma. And of course, all the funding bodies which keep us going. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.